In this lecture, we will see different sizing methods. A discontinuity is best evaluated when its size is known. The operators wish to accurately know the real refractor size is understandable, therefore it is expected that uh, an indestructive testing method such as ultrasonic testing give this information. However, due to the fact that the, on the display only the echo can be interpreted, this means the reflected sound coming from the discontinuity, it is very often uh, difficult and in some cases even impossible to reliably assert the size of the reflector. In fact, the echo height plays the decisive part when evaluating discontinuities during manual ultrasonic testing. Let's see the 6 dB drop method. This method is used for uh, sizing large reflectors. If the probe is moved until the signal amplitude from a uh, reflector drops to half its original screen height, then it can be said uh, that the sound beam is half on and half off the reflector. So by moving the probe until the signal from the end of the uh, large reflector halves its height, we can thus estimate that the edge of the reflector is immediately below the center of the probe. This is called the 6 dB drop sizing method because the amplitude of the signal drops by half which correspond to 6 dB when um, the probe is uh, moved to the edge of uh, the large reflector. You can see on the screen we have the sound beam directed uh, to the reflector and we get the maximum signal which is A0 amplitude. So if we move the probe till the amplitude of the signal dropped by 50% we can say that the edge of the reflector is on the center on the center line of uh, the beam and we do the same from the other side now let's see the 20 dB drop method we can use a beam plot to find the age of a defect by using the age of the sound beam. If we know the width of uh, the beam at a certain distance from the crystal, we can mark the distance across the defect from where the extreme edges of the beam touch each end of uh, the defect and then subtract the beam width to get the defect size. When the signal from the defect drops by 20 dB from its peak, we judge that the edge of the beam is just touching the end of the defect. We can find uh, the width of the sound beam at that range by uh, consulting the beam plot that we have made. And we should note that the peak of the defect is normally taken as uh, being the last peak on the screen before the probe goes off uh, the end of the defect, not necessarily the maximum signal from the defect. Now let's see um, the beam construction at 20 dB. First step, we have to find the hole at depth of 13 mm with a, a zero degree probe, then maximize the signal. We have to move the probe until we get the highest signal we can from the hole, then uh, we turn the signal to full screen height using the gain function. And then we have to mark the position of uh, the middle of the probe. Second step, we have to move the probe uh, to one side until the signal drops to 10% uh, of uh, the full screen height. Of course, 10% of the full screen height uh, corresponds to uh, 20 dB. And we have to mark uh, the center of uh, the probe on the side of the block as you can see on this animation. Third step, uh, we have to move the probe to the other side of the hole until the signal drops to 10% uh, which is uh, 20 dB and we have to mark the center of the probe on the block. We have to use the distance uh, between uh, the marks on the block to plot the beam on a piece of graph paper.
We can do the same steps for a 25 millimeter block. So first we find uh, the hole with the, the zero degree probe and we maximize the signals to full screen height and mark the position at the center of the probe. Second step we have to move uh, to uh, one side of uh, the hole and we get 10% of uh, the initial amplitude and mark the position and third step we move to the other side we get 10% of uh, the initial amplitude and we mark the position and actually this is uh, the piece of graph that we are gonna use for um, uh, the construction of the beam so if you can see here, remember that we have marked uh, three uh, positions for 13, 25 and we can so also do the same for 32 millimeter. So for each block we have three positions. The first uh, or the center one is uh, the position where we get uh, the maximum signal. On the left side 10%, on the right side 10% of the signal and so on. For the construction of an angle beam we have to do the same step so we find first the hole and we get the maximum signal we put it uh, on full screen height using the gain function we move the probe to one side of uh, the block till we get 10% uh, of the original amplitude and we do the same from the other side and we can use a uh, different uh, depth as we did before for a uh, zero degree probe and then we, we use uh, the same graph piece to uh, construct the angle beam now another sizing method is uh, to construct the DAC curve so DAC stands for uh, distance amplitude curve this is uh, the recommended block as per uh, the European norm uh, number 1714. It has a four hole on different depths. So we direct the beam on the first hole. We get the signal number one. We direct on uh, number two. And so on. So, uh, after getting the signals from the four holes, we can say that this is uh, the distance amplitude curve for our probe. We can do this for uh, 30, 35, 45, 60 or 70 degree probes. So, this is going to be uh, the distance amplitude curve as recommended per the European norm number 1714.